I seem calmer. I'm sleeping better. Ongoing shoulder problem. And hold. Okay, so both of those are quite difficult. Mm -hmm. Cervical two, because whenever cervical two is strained, it makes us have a bilateral glute max failure. Yeah, in between the scapula, mm -hmm. yeah, okay. That's good. And the leg acts as a lever to work on the hips, moving the scapula independently. Bringing a line of fingertips. So I'm going to be doing a core therapy on you yep. and this is your maybe fourth? It is the fourth, yes. Yeah, it is the fourth, yeah. okay. And have you seen any improvements since the, the first one, two, three? I seem calmer. Hmm. Um, I'm sleeping probably better, hmm. especially when I put that lavender oil on my shoulder as far as I can reach. I do it myself. <laughs> Okay. And that's quite good actually. Mm, it's nice and yeah. natural, yeah. smells nice, yeah. helps you sleep probably. I think it does actually, yes. Yeah. And it's relieving the shoulder. Yeah, it seems mm. to be, yeah. Mm. So, um, it, can you recall what was the main reason you started coming for core? Well, um, but well, really to get a better balance in my body really. Um, and see what problems I had got. And of course, I've always had this ongoing shoulder problem. Yeah. Um, That's with your right shoulder. Yeah, my right shoulder, yeah. Um, I think it's due to lifting things, sacks of flowers when I was younger, because I used to work in a bakery. Um, I suppose it's never going to be completely right, but it's, 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 it's okay, so, yeah. Right. And I think also my breathing is probably a little bit better. Um, yeah. Mm. So on your consultation form, you mentioned about your breathing, mm. and of course you're a keen swimmer, aren't yes, you? Yes, I am, yeah. Well, I try and swim every day. With the breathing and the shoulder, is that affected by the swimming? Well, I do, th I do think um, the breathing is. Um, and in fact, on days I do yoga and Pilates, if I swim, I notice I'm, I swim better. So it is down to actually practicing your breathing isn't it mm. yeah and maybe relaxing those muscles mm. as well not just strengthening them but mm. also relaxing them so that they can extend yeah they're soft that's right yeah okay well the core therapy will be helping that as well yeah. beautiful day today it's lovely yeah. yeah it makes you feel the sun makes you feel better doesn't yeah, it yeah it's lovely okay so we're going to do some kinesiology as normal mm. if you could raise an arm for me i'm going to push here mm. and hold Okay, a little bit of weakness there. Coming up the other side and hold. Yeah, a bit stronger. Can you raise a leg? I'm going to push here and hold. Nice, nice and strong. No movement. And hold. Good. And so two together. And hold. Yeah. And hold. Interesting. It could be this shoulder causing this arm weakness, which mm -hmm. then, of course, causes a double weakness in the um, Ipsy test. Let me just have a little feel behind you here. You relax down nice and heavy onto the couch. I'm just feeling through the edge of that sacrum. And then arm and leg again and hold. Yeah, a bit better. It's a bit soft, but a bit better. Um, let me just have a little feel on this side. So the same edge of that sacrum. And then extending arm and leg and hold. Yeah, you're definitely stronger when I do it that side as well. Interesting. Can you, with this, uh, a finger from this hand, just touch the roof of your mouth for me? And I'm going to ask you to extend this arm and leg and hold. 
no, it's not making much difference, so that's fine. So I think I might have done that for you before. Mm. It's called yeah. a SBS float, um, but we don't need to do it today, so that's good. So yeah, it's definitely this um, right-sided ipsy. I think it might be affected by the shoulder, so I'm just going to do some shoulder tests with it. So just resting your arm there, leaving it there, one arm up and hold. Okay, can I just test that arm on its own and hold? Yeah, similar. So can you bend this elbow? Can you put your thumb to little finger? Yeah, I'm going to pull, pull apart and you're going to hold them together and hold. Okay, so I'm just going to keep coming back to that test and hold. Ah, oh, really strong, lovely. So out to the side and hold really strong and then this arm up by your ear so all the way back yeah and hold lovely <laughs> it's passing all the tests at the moment and hold really good and then turning your hand around and hold really good okay so this shoulder is passing all those tests at the moment how has the shoulder been since i've seen you last yeah it's okay yeah yep. and you sleep on it okay as well yeah not too bad thank you mm -hmm. so when do you notice it most is it swimming or is it lifting well, no it's just occasionally it um it's and it's when i exercise when i get it to a certain place that i find it hurts what type of exercise well, for instance, in the pool today, when you have to keep your hands, your arms out like that for a long period, mm. that's when it aches. Um. Oh, is that like an aquafit class mm. then? Right. Okay, so you're literally holding the weight of them. Mm. Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. Okay. But it passed the test when it was out there, though. Yes, but not if it's left for a long period. Mm. Mm. Okay. And where do you... when? When it hurts, when you've got it out there, where exactly on the shoulder does it hurt? Is it the top, inside, no, it's or right, it's right in, in, in the shoulder. On the scapula? Mm. Around the edge of the scapula? That's, yes. Yeah, that's like, yeah. yeah. okay. Because we've done cupping once yeah. or twice with you. you. you well, cupping last week. Yeah, yeah on the back, mm. yeah. I think that might be the thing to really help soften and loosen the five the, the fascia right okay. in, in the back so mm -hmm. that might be your thing going forward um how's tummy been that's all right yeah behaving yeah would you like to turn over And bend your elbow if that helps. Is, is that better for you? Yeah, no, yeah. Okay, so can you bend a knee for me? And raising the knee off the couch, I'm going to push here, you're going to hold up and hold. Okay, and the other side. Bending first and hold. Okay, so both of those are quite difficult and that tells us as core therapists that it's going to be this lovely little bone here, this, the C2, cervical 2, because whenever cervical 2 is strained it makes us have a bilateral glute max failure in, in the buttocks, which is that test we just did. So I'm just having a little feel in order to therapy localise that means stimulate that area so that it starts kicking in and uh, the alignment will improve. Obviously, I'm going to be doing some techniques on it to help that as well. OK, so um, just going to start some tweenar. Warming up the back. You've got the sun on you as well. Mm -hmm. rocking the hips to try and create some fluidity. So I'm generally talking, Angela, to the viewers, the camera, so... Yeah. Really yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, rocking into the hips. That helps move the spine. And the spine 
and head and legs should respond in a particular manner. So as core therapists, we're looking for the body to have a, like a wave reaction up and down through the legs and up the spine. And sometimes the body acts quite stiffly, like a, an iron bar rather than a, a snake. So we, we need it to wave. I can feel some real tightness low down here in the very bottom of the lumbar spine. So I might get those cups low down as well as on the shoulder. So it doesn't hurt when I'm doing this, Angela? It does when you come up to the... Um, here. No, a bit further down on the other side, that bit sort of there, that sort of pipe thing. Yeah, in between the scapula, mm -hmm. yeah, okay. So how long is the swimming pool going to be shut for? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Steam room's been out of action already since about August. They've got to take the seats out, take some piping out because it's leaking and health and safety dictate that they should shut everything. Oh dear. On, on, the, on the wet side. So, and they're, they're saying four weeks um, we'll see. And I might go and investigate the open um, wild swimming up at uh, Bishampton. Yes, yes, I've done that. So you'd even go at winter, would you? Well, I'd have to get myself a, a wetsuit. Yes. I, I, I'll consider it. Yeah, OK. Very good. And there's the lenches. Yes, I think the other one's possibly a bit... Um, bit nicer. Yeah, I've done them both. They do yoga up there, don't they? And they do paddle boarding. Yes, they That's do. One at Bishampton. Yeah. Have you done paddle boarding? No, it's something I want to have a go at. Oh, great. But it might just give me that push if, it, if the things at Wood Norton are going to be closed. I've still got the exercise classes, but they're a bit spread out. Oh, I see. But not the aqua classes, obviously. So you do Pilates there as well? Yeah, and yoga. And Richmond routine, and uh, move it or lose it, yeah. Amazing. Yeah, you're a fit lady. So how many hours of exercise do you do a day? Well, this morning I've done just over an hour swimming and then I've done half an hour aqua. Um, but for Wednesday, like tomorrow, I would swim, then I'll do another exercise class and then I'll do Pilates for an hour. And then Thursdays I normally do yoga at half past eight, then I do what they call a Richmond routine, then I... Um, swim and then there's another class after that if, if I want to do it so yeah amazing Um, I'm glad you've managed to find core therapy because it's great doing all of that exercise but almost the more exercise you do the more your body might need a little therapy but also learning how to relax as well mm -hmm. and then it's going to help soften your body and help you sleep. So I'm just going to take your arm, letting it go. This is the sore shoulder. So I'm just going to support the arm, letting it bend and go. Mm. 
and letting the arm go there, that's it, lovely. Is that sore when I do that? No. Oh, good. Oh, clicking. Hmm. Before we get in with the cups, I'm just going to give the scapula a little Qigong float. So. Just putting some warmed carrier oil straight on the back, no essential oils. Yes, I've, I've got a couple of those kind of bras that are post-operative and they're mm. so much softer. Mm. I think the fabric and the stitching like the um, the hems yeah. are softer, aren't they? Yeah. And you've found that's better on your shoulder. Okay, so first cup going on about here. That feel all right? Yes, thank you.
So this style of clapping is helping to soften the fascia to bring good blood flow to the area, warm the skin and the muscle, but also trying to soften that muscle and any trapped nerves and muscle spasms that might be happening up and around that shoulder and scapular area. So this is the main area of concern, isn't it, Angela? It is. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So in between the scapula and the yeah. spine, a bit lower down on the right-hand side. So I was treating someone a couple of weeks ago with a trapped nerve in exactly this place. And um, alongside cupping, I asked her to do some a movement with her shoulder to try and soften and stretch that area in order to uh, relieve any spasm of muscle on it and thereby trapping a nerve. So I might do that with you in a moment. That's good. So Angela's spine is nicely rounded at the top where we can see the vertebra lifting above the fascia. And sometimes when that happens, it's difficult to get a purchase on the surface of the skin with a cup, but it's managing, which is great because I want to be bringing the circulation and boosting with the cups that energy to that part of the spine. And I'm also always looking at the colour of the skin underneath the cups and they're going nicely rosy. And of course I think this is only the second time I've cupped the back. I've cupped um, the abdomen before with Angela. So it's quite nice to bring some of that good warming energy all the way down the spine to the very lower back. Bringing some lovely rosy colour, warmth and good circulation to the very lower back. That will help the whole spine. Yeah. Good. And then just around the kidney area, which is just above the waistline. Kidneys love a bit of cupping. They like warmth. It enables them to filter better all the fluids and water. 
They like movement and of course cupping brings plenty of movement with the blood moving. It's like giving them an exercise. There's a little bit of detox coming out of the kidneys and I can tell they're um, releasing toxins. So now I'm going to get some smaller cups for this fascia here. Lovely, good. Just want to warm that area up first and of course I always treat the body equally left to right, up and down, so I'm going to also introduce a couple of cups to the left. How is it feeling Angela? I'm quite tight on the two bigger ones you put in. Um, which two? Do you mean on the kidney area? Mm. Yeah. <coughs> that better? Mm, yeah. 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 Yeah, they had gone quite rosy. How are we doing? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, we feel fine. Okay. So I'm just going to help this right shoulder now. That's good. That's really good. Moving around well into the fascia, softening and releasing. Well done, you're doing really well. Okay, so could you just hang your right arm off the couch? That's it, lovely, and thereby opening this scapular bone edge here. 
so that helps to get underneath the scapula a little in case that's where the strain and pain is coming from. How's it feeling? Are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine, thank you. So now I'm just placing these smaller cups around the edge of the scapula helping to soften the fascia underneath the bone. Removing any tightness and the very top corner. Yeah, they feel good. Lovely. Got some nice rosy markings, nothing too bad. Just shows that the blood circulation is getting through really well. It's a good sign. Is your arm comfortable hanging off yeah, the couch? Fine, yeah. Looking good. Just going to leave you like that for a moment while I look at the foot. Working into the neck. Shoulder. Quite tight on the vertebra by the shoulder. And then down that edge where the cups are. Yeah, quite tight there. Let's see if I can move the shoulder. That's really good. You're letting me take the whole weight of the leg and foot and the leg acts as a lever to work on the hips, correcting any misalignment in the pelvis and up the spine. Lovely. again into the neck, shoulder, scapula top, mid and bottom corner.
isolating, moving the scapula independently. And then down from kidney area that we saw earlier with the cup, down the ureter to the bladder, helping clear out any waste materials. And that's psychologically as well, so any waste, any stuff we don't need from our lives. quite firm in the foot around now this would be mm -mm, bottom of the colon mm, just creating some softness in there it's quite firm and tight Bring your arm back on now if you want to. Cupping's a bit like colouring in. Wherever the blood isn't, we need it to go. So it makes us aware of body areas and all the internals that may need a little bit more circulation. Then down into the lower back. Doing really well, Angela. Then up and into that shoulder. Looking lovely, nice and rosy. So I'm just looking at the body posture. So just bending the elbow, letting it sit wherever is comfortable. You move it to suit. And then just having a look at that shoulder. I think that's a little bit raised there. 
here. Do another wing stretch to see if we've got more mobility now. So letting the elbow relax all the way down. Lovely. And a good circulation. Separating. There's no click on this side. Okay, let it go, that's it, lovely. Mm, that feels better. No click this side now. Good. That's nice. Often the float encourages us to recalibrate by taking a resetting big breath. Lovely. Do you want to towel over you or not? No, I'm not bothered, thank yeah. you. Okay.
Alex. Take a deep breath in and out. So or okay? No, it's okay. Mm. Good. It's moving really well. How's the spine feeling there? Yeah, it feels all right. Mm, brilliant. Good. I think the cupping worked. So, with long fingers, I'm just gently shifting each vertebra, left and right, assessing what movement there is, making sure none of the vertebrae are stuck together, moving as one, and making sure none of the vertebrae are from the correct alignment out to one side. The neck is actually the area that probably needs more work now than the shoulder and spine lower down. So we're looking at about C2 is the one we found earlier when we did the bilateral glute max test. So the way to relieve this is to create some space by letting the head tilt back naturally, bringing some space into the very top where the head sits on the spine, just above C1. Letting the space settle. And then elongating, letting more space come into the top of the spine and indeed 
above the spine to the head. And then next vertebra down in between C1 and C2, letting the head tilt back, raising at that point in order that the tilt is greater. feel sore there and then elongating to stretch and allow more space into the in between those vertebrae budging them again see if there's a little bit more softness there there's a little but the c2 c3 are definitely quite caught it can take a long time for the neck to come back into alignment. Sometimes it can take months or years of therapy. Depends how bad the neck is. Breathing into that area, allowing more and more space. That's good. Then rolling the head to the side just to bounce each of the seven neck vertebrae down, as in down to the couch. See if they shift. Letting the full weight of your head go into my hand, that's it. And then moving the spinal processes off to the side in order to use their arms and therefore work on the main body of the vertebra to help it shift to left and right. When I find a little blockage or tightness, just centering some Qigong and a little pressure onto that particular spinal process. Always elongating. And then to the other side, doing the same thing again, feeling into the spine, bouncing it down at the vertebra themselves. And then the spinal processes. Enjoying the freedom that this action gives. When our neck is free, we feel such freedom in the whole body. into the soft fascia and letting the head go, bringing a line of fingertips and letting the weight of the head and neck tilt back onto that line. off with a moment of neck, qigong, touching in th into the temporals, at the temples, hands supporting at the back of the neck to the occiput.
feeling the energy from the body. Qigong is activating the body's own healing mechanism. There is so much capability and potential in our own bodies to heal. The heat now activated with the Qigong to the fingers and hands, the back of the neck is intense. So much heat and healing. Okay, take a nice long breath and sending your breath all around your body, stretching out fingers and toes, rotating into wrists, maybe ankles, and if you feel like it, into those shoulders, one way and the other. Breathing deeply into the abdomen and then extending the whole body by stretching the arms up. Nice long body stretch. You feel good? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so just two retests to do. It was the right ipsy, so arm and leg together and hold. Oh, do you know, we keep having that at the end of the treatment. I can remember before. So I'm just going to have a little feel of the right side. So nice and heavy. A little feel of the right side of the sacrum, iliac, down to the femur, onto the sacrum itself. Okay, arm and leg together and hold. Yeah, okay. Now, can we just put the arm there at 20 degrees and give me this little finger and thumb nice and tight and hold. Lovely, really tight. That was the only one that was even vaguely mm. uh, week earlier all the others were really strong and last week when we did them the ones where you had your arm in front of you thumb yeah. up and thumb down weren't great but absolutely strong this time okay. so the shoulder the arm is definitely improving so you should start seeing some benefits you know le okay. less pain and tightness yeah. Yeah. right you're free okay. to move when you okay. want to you feel good yes thank you 